as it says above our map at the back, what in the world are we doing? And I know that sometimes we went, oh, I changed that early, didn't I? Yeah, that's why I shortened the announcements because of this. Okay, so anyway, so if you were here in January, I showed this video, and so now I'm going to show it again. Oh, yeah, I tell you something. I think you'll understand when I say that something. I wanna hold your hand. 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 <laughs> I think that is just the, the sweetest, cutest little video of mom and dad with their baby and just interacting. And so, with that in mind, we'll try this again. As I said, what in the world are we doing? Well, when I showed that video, the reason I showed it was because of this. This is uh, January 22nd, 2019. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo signed a radical abortion bill into law. And you see what it says on his podium? Reproductive justice. How is that justice when what this is doing is promoting abortions to later and later and later and later in the term and no time to wait? It just seems so opposite of what those words mean to me. And it's only gotten worse since then. On June 12th of this year, Illinois Governor J.B. Pritzker signed a bill that legalized abortion in Illinois that was more radical than New York's law is. And when he signed it, there were people that were there that, as you can see, they're applauding. And he's holding up the pen like, yeah, it's so awesome. What the, the bill did, it repealed the Illinois abortion law of 1975, which punished doctors for abortions not deemed necessary as well as the state's Partial Birth Abortion Ban Act. It also establishes that a fertilized egg, embryo, or fetus does not have independent rights under the law of this state. That's what was passed in Illinois earlier this month. But I will tell you this, in our country, as bad as all those are, the news is not all bad. Because Mississippi Governor Phil Bryant recently signed the heartbeat bill into law in Minnesota, or Mississippi, rather. He recently tweeted his reason for doing so. He said, we will all answer to the good Lord one day. I will say in this instance, I fought for the lives of innocent babies, even under threat of legal action. And Kentucky, Ohio, and Georgia also signed heartbeat bills. And there are many Hollywood productions that film in Georgia. And a lot of them are talking about removing all of their production from Georgia because of this oppressive law, is what they're saying. And if I'm not mistaken, I think Georgia's governor is a woman. And so <laughs> they're like saying that men are just overriding, and yet there's a woman governor who signed it. So they're not even correct about that. Alabama also has new laws protecting unborn children as well. So... The abortion issue really tugged at my own personal heart. And so I got to thinking, what can we do as a church to help in the fight against abortion? Because we're kind of a small church. I mean, we only have 90 chairs, and if you look around, they're not all filled. So is there anything we can do? So I did a little research, and I actually even went on Planned Parenthood's website and they give a description of what happens during an abortion at one of their facilities. And one of the lines reads this. And don't worry, it's, it's cleaned up from their point of view. The doctor will use a combination of medical tools and a suction device to gently take the pregnancy tissue out of your uterus. That's how they word that. What we know, at least those of us who believe that conception begins or conception begins life. Life begins then. It's murder. But the pregnancy tissue is gently removed. 
they call the baby pregnancy tissue. I almost got sick. And then I wondered again, what can we do? Well, then I heard about an alternative clinic that started right here in Boise, and it's called Stanton Healthcare. You may be familiar with it. There's a woman named Brandy Swindell is the one who started it way back in 2006. Stanton Healthcare, these are things that they provide, and they provide them free of charge. They don't charge anybody who comes into their clinic any money. They provide early early detection of pregnancies, Pregnancy verification, including how far along you are. They do limited ultrasound exams. They do post-abortive exams and support. So if you've had an abortion, you can go in there and be taken care of through them. They do se- have a sexual integrity program. They have client advocacy. They, they provide massage therapy, childbirth education classes, maternity and baby supplies, practical assistance, STD testings, and referrals for OBGYN care, housing, legal advice, and even adoption. There are two things they don't do. Number one, they don't supply any contraceptives and they do not perform abortions. So I contacted them and set up a tour when I went last Thursday. This is their facility in uh, Boise on State Street in one of the worst construction zones if you happen to have been down in there near that church and Collister and stuff, it's torn up. But I found it, and um, they took me, after a meeting that I had with the staff and a brief meeting with Brandy herself, I, I really felt honored because I was hoping to be able to meet her. And during the meeting, there's a, at the door, and she opened the door, she said, I'm sorry to interrupt, but when a pastor comes here, I want to meet him. And I was like, I wanted to meet you, this is great. So I stood up and we shook hands and talked. She said she didn't have any time, so she only stayed for like 15, 20 minutes and talked with us. <laughs> it was great. But anyway, so then they took me on a tour of the place, and one of the places they took me in was the room where they do the ultrasounds. Now, this is not their machine exactly. I didn't take a picture of it, but theirs is similar. Now, Planned Parenthood has these, but they have the screen and the image on the screen is much smaller, is what they told me, and they keep the screen mostly turned away from the patient. Look at the difference in Stanton Healthcare. They have a big screen TV on the wall where you can see where her head would be over here, and she can look up and see her baby. And it's bigger than the one that's on the ultrasound machine. They also gave me this when I was in this room, and it, and it was really an, an amazing thing to me. This is basically a rubber latex model of a 12-week-old baby. Look how small, and yet so formed. Fingers, toes, eyes, ears, nose, mouth. It thinks its heart is certainly clearly beating. And yet when I held it, I was holding it as if it were real. And I was like, wow, this is... And it, you know, I mean, it wiggles. It it feels fragile. And so I was holding it like this, and then I said... Oh, I don't want to forget, and, and I want to give this back to you. She said, no, we gave that for you, to you to keep. I'm like, wow, how special is that? So it was a really moving experience to me. They also took me in and showed me what they call their baby boutique, where they have, again, free of charge, baby clothes, baby bottles, formula, diapers, uh, powder, any kind of thing, lotion, things that moms need to get started. I think they even have some maternity clothes in there. It's pretty cool. They really do take care of them. Now, their location is very interesting. It's carefully planned on their part. This is a picture of the Planned Parenthood facility in Boise, and you can see it if you look closely. It says Planned Parenthood up there. It's it's a little hard to read in this picture. Um, It's also on State Street. Well, this is a wider (laughs) shot (laughs) because on the right you see Planned Parenthood, and on the left you see the picture of Stanton Healthcare. I mean, they're about 20 feet apart. It's so cool. They're, but what these guys are, they're on the front lines. They really are. Now, there's a Planned Parenthood facility, a second one, in Meridian on Franklin between uh, Eagle and Locust Grove. And this is a picture of outside that, but in the middle, in the center of that, in the gray dress holding the child, not her child, but a baby, a child, is Brandy. That's Brandy Swindell who started this. And these are eight mothers and babies that they saved. They saved all these babies from abortions. And so they decided to take a team photo, basically, 
and they thought, why not pose in the parking lot in front of Planned Parenthood? Well, Planned Parenthood eventually filed a lawsuit against Stanton Healthcare because they were, they were saying that they were, you know, holding up signs and grabbing people because what they do is they have a mobile van, a big van that they can take places and do health care on the spot in places where they can't have a clinic or don't have one. So they were saying, you guys are doing this and you're, you're ha ha harassing and hassling our customers. Stop it. So they filed a lawsuit. And in the middle of the process, Planned Parenthood presented this picture as evidence of the harassment that they're doing. And when <laughs> it gets better, the judge saw it and said, case dismissed. You guys are crazy. <laughs> he threw it out. He said, forget you. And it was gone. The lawsuit was gone. So this is one of those cases where, you know, the Bible says um, that the Lord will fight for you. He will. And he did. It was so cool. Now, this Planned Parenthood facility is where that little arrow mark or whatever you want to call it, it says Planned Parenthood Meridian Health Center. Anyway, the triangular spot on the right next to it, Planned, uh, Stanton Healthcare purchased that. And in the process of wanting to get a facility built on it, it turns out that the building that's, I don't have my pointer, but right above the word parenthood, that looks like a diamond shape from at this angle, across the parking lot from Planned Parenthood, is uh, leased by born-again Christian pro-life attorneys who are moving to another facility who will let Stanton Healthcare move in right across the parking lot in an already st built structure. It's so cool. They are so close. And they are moving there. They are not, excuse me, they're not moving there. They're expanding. So they'll leave the one on State Street open, and then this will be an additional facility. So I don't want you to think they're closing one and opening it up. The grand opening that they have planned is for August 4th from 3 to 6 p.m., and that's at 2176 East Franklin Road. Now, I'm not going to try to fool you. They do have an agenda as Stanton Healthcare, and it's pretty radical. It says, we will not just compete. We will not simply expose. We will not only defund. It's time to replace Planned Parenthood. They call it the Stanton Healthcare Revolution. So again, back to this question. How can we as a church body help? Three things. And the first thing that they mentioned to me, which I thought was awesome, was prayer. More important than giving, more important than volunteering, more important than protesting anything is to pray. Okay, and we will be doing that. The second one is to give financially. As a church, we will add this to our list of things that we financially support because I totally believe in what they're doing. And I, I've been appalled by abortion, and it's just getting worse all the time. So this is what we're going to do. But, you know, you can, you can um, give financially, too, on your own if you want to. Some people like to support with funds to cover approximate care costs, like, for example, how much um, uh, an ultrasound would be or a pregnancy test or something. And maybe you want to sponsor four of those, one of those, ten of those. I don't know. So I did contact them after I visited and asked them, Come on. There we go. Anyway, they said that early ultrasounds, as they call them, typically would be charged about $250 for one of those. They offer it free of charge. Uh, pregnancy test is $35, and the STD, which is, you know, um, sexually transmitted disease or sexually transmitted infections, test between $30 and $60. And remember, they don't charge anyone for any of their services, but as far as any of you guys, this is in no way to pressure you. This is just to let you know what's out there, what you can do. You know that I don't harp on money. I don't rag people. I don't say, hey, you know, dig deep. We'll keep passing the plate until it's full. Just round and round and round. No, we don't do that here. But whatever the Lord leads you to give, it's fine and wonderful, and it's between you and him and Stanton Healthcare. And then the third thing you can do, it's up to you, but you could volunteer we have volunteer packets right in front of all those egg crates that are stacking up there on the back counter. They're volunteer application packets, and you can certainly feel free to look through them and, and see if it's something for you to do. There are a lot of different opportunities, and you can contact them and ask them if there's anything that you could do 
Um, in fact, I personally told them if they needed a plumber, I'd be as available as possible since I was a plumber for 25 years and I've kept my license current. So um, they, that's one of the things she said, Brandy said, are you licensed? Right away, first thing I said, I am, but I don't have a contractor's license, but I have a plumber who will allow me to work under his, so it's the same thing. So here it is, Stanton Healthcare, which Brandy named after suffragette and women's rights activist Elizabeth Cady Stanton. Now, if you see all the people in front there, the man on the right uh, in the dark blue shirt is Jason Herring, and he'll be here. I, I asked him, he does a lot of their uh, spiritual things and religious things, if you will, and visits churches. So he checked his schedule, and he's available in September. These guys are getting pretty busy, so it's pretty cool. So he's going to come here and, and do a big presentation to give us a lot more information. And, um, and I'm excited about that. And then they wanted to take a silly picture, so we, as much of us, as many of us wanted to, jumped in the air. Um, and they sent me this information in an email. They said, you, you and your church body can like us on Facebook at Stanton Boise, or Stanton International, and you can sign up for e-newsletters at stantoninternational.org. So um, that's what the coming soon attraction is, and um, it's what our church is going to take a stand. It's interesting because we've been going through in, in Ephesians on uh, Thursday nights with the men, and we just got to the point where Paul talks about the armor of God, and he says, and after you've taken a stand, you've been able to stand. Stand, therefore, in the full armor of God. Put it on. And so that's what we're going to do. Sometimes all it takes is someone to just stand in the gap. Someone to just say, no, <laughs> this isn't going to happen. It can't. And so um, the only other thing I want to mention, in a room of this size with as, as many people are here, there could be more than one of you especially the women, obviously, but men are involved in it too, who have had an abortion. I mean, not that a man would, but you know, he's involved with a woman, so that could happen. And first of all, I want you to know that the forgiveness of God, you are not beyond that at all, okay? The only unforgivable sin I see in Scripture is rejecting Jesus as your Savior and Lord. Everything else is under his blood. So please accept that forgiveness and live in his grace and in his love, knowing that God is not mad at you that he doesn't hate you, and none of us do either, okay? In fact, the woman that I called and contacted with and met with her, she had an abortion a long time ago. And so she obviously knows what she's talking about when she talks about the pain, and she talks, and now she's working for this group, and they didn't say, oh, you had an abortion, well, that disqualifies you. No, not at all, okay? So I know that that could happen, or if you have a daughter or a, a sister or a friend, you know, just let them know that they're not beyond God, they're not beyond Jesus, they're not beyond his love, his grace, his mercy, okay? So let's pray. Father God, I thank you for our church body and for the opportunity that you've given us to participate in Stanton Healthcare. And we pray, Lord, for your blessing upon it. We pray for this to be a success. We pray for their facility to be able to open and for every baby that gets saved. It's such an, an amazing miracle. We pray for something so radical as the defunding of Planned Parenthood and then eventually that it would go away. We pray for Roe v. Wade to be overturned. We pray for revival in this country because that's what it's going to take. It's going to take people loving you, people's hearts being changed because right now they're hard and they need you. So we thank you for this chance.